Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. This is Coffee and Conversation uh, with the Cal Poly CIE SBDC. Um, if you have any questions at all during this, uh, this segment, please feel free to put questions in the Q&A box and I'll filter them over to Nate. Um, you know, uh, and that's pretty much it <laughs> because I think we're in, um, in a mode where uh, everyone's automatically muted, so except for uh, Nate and I. So who are we? We're the Cal Poly CIE SBDC. Uh, it's a national program. There are a thousand locations throughout the US. We're based in San Luis Obispo. And we're here to help uh, all businesses throughout the region, throughout San Luis Obispo County um, achieve their business goals. Um, we can help you with uh, all sorts of, anything that has to do with your, your business, be it um, uh, marketing, uh, manufacturing, operations, funding, uh, just contact us if you have any questions on any of those topics. Uh, next, we are sponsored by the SBA and the GoBiz office at the state level. So we use that funding to pay our consultants to give you free consulting. So all of our consulting, all of the help resources that we provide is completely free to all of you as business owners. Uh, and just a quick, quick uh, segment that we're going to show our key sponsor here for Coffee and Conversation, Mina Cooper, and I'll let the video play for just uh, two minutes. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jamal al Haj, and I'm a partner with Maynard Cooper and Gale in the firm's San Francisco office. Maynard Cooper is a full service law firm of national reach with over 300 lawyers across 11 offices coast to coast. Our San Francisco practice focuses on advising emerging growth companies and venture capital firms, including with respect to equity management, financing, employment, and intellectual property matters. We are extremely proud to be a Founder Circle sponsor amongst an extraordinary circle of other dedicated philanthropists who recognize the immense value that Cal Poly's Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship bring to the SLO community. We hope that each of you enjoys this upcoming training and workshop and are able to incorporate the knowledge and know-how that will be presented shortly to further help grow, develop, and accelerate your businesses. So that's our sponsor, Mina Cooper. Uh, and now we have this morning, Nate Stein, who's the co-founder, CEO of Plate Spray. Um, actually, Nate, did you change the name? No, it's still Plate Spray. Everybody, no, well, every, Plate Scrape's the product we sell. PS Creations is the company I founded. Right, 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 right. I know yeah. this, yeah, no, yeah. You have ideas, I know that, uh, we'll get into that, but I know you have so many ideas for other products and other, other parts to, to expand and grow the business. But the main product is called Plate Scrape and that's the product you're known for. Yep. Um, so let's let's start from the from the very start. Let's start for, uh, with the, um, I remember you coming into my office about six years ago. Yeah, yeah, October, it was June, June of 2015 when the, I had the idea and wow. then October was, tech pitch so between june and october is where we met yeah so in june you came we met and you had an idea and you showed me some diagrams on paper <laughs> it was actually on a paper plate on the paper plate that's was, right yeah. that was great and it's like here's here's my idea and uh and i thought it was amazing and and um an amazingly smart idea uh, it is ironic. So I'm in the chat. It was, I still have the paper plate. It's in my safe right now. I won't ever lose it. And it's one of those moments where, um, and I'm usually the, the, the world's biggest skeptic, right? Because I see these ideas every day and half the time, like, mm. <laughs> but when we met, you were so passionate, so driven, and so excited. And it totally made sense to me. And often it's the simplest ideas that seem to be uh, the most amazing. So, uh, tell us about the idea and the product, and then sure. um, I'd like to dig into your your um, uh, your expertise from industry, your industry expertise, which kind of validated the idea for me. I thought, you know, you've been in the, in this industry for many many years, so you know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It is a problem. You found a solution. So yeah, yeah. Tell us about the problem. Tell us about the solution. This idea you created, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, huge problem as you know is water waste. And we live in California, so we're constantly reminded of how much water we don't have and how much water we're taking from others that also don't have it. 
So water is becoming a huge scarcity. And in, in the last five, 10 years, it's, it's getting worse. So in 2015, you know, my parents have a catering company in a restaurant and they have, my dad's been in the restaurant industry since he moved here. Um, and that was in the seventies. So I've been around food my entire life. Growing up, my dad owned a deli. I'd always have the best food at lunch. And then in high school, he finally started this catering company and I was playing football and eating the best food it, and working with my dad. Like I couldn't have asked for a better life. It was really awesome. And he's a huge entrepreneur and business owner himself. And so I learned a lot of good qualities. And like, when you find something, you got to really go for it and then work hard towards it, whether or not you're going to get great success out of it. Um, when, when I was working at these weddings and when I was washing these dishes, I was sitting there spraying off these plates. As everybody knows, when you're in the back of a kitchen, you got to work quick and you got to work fast. You got to spray off all these plates, scrub these things down, throw them through a dishwasher that's using more water just to sanitize them. And to me, right there, I was like, wait a second, two times the amount of water just to get one end result? Like, that doesn't make sense. We need to fix that right here. And at the wedding, I was just like, why can't I just like you would a golf club in a golf club cleaner and clean these plates? And that night I went home and I've told this story to you a hundred times and went to Food for Less. They're open 24 hours a day. And I literally went to the toilet brush scrubby aisle with my cart, took my hand like this and grabbed all of them, put them in my cart, went home, built my first prototype. I think I could pull it up within seconds on my phone because it, I, it's right here. It's my first picture on my phone always. And I built this. Awesome. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know that I ever saw that very first prototype. Oh That's my God. That's the very first one. It's, it's a bunch of scrubbies, two by four and plexiglass that I legitimately cut at midnight with a skill saw. And my neighbors hated me for a sec. <laughs> I had to get this crazy idea out of my head and like into an actual form. And then from that time until we met, um, I worked with my dad going to the hardware store, trying to find a, a legitimate way on how to make this yeah um and then it went really really fast because you had the idea in june and then we had this big event coming up in october called tech pitch so tech pitch is kind of the predecessor to angel con and the prize it was a, i still oh, it was have it before. i will never get rid of this judy this is one of the happiest days i was so humbled because i Going up on stage, when you first met me, you knew I knew nothing about business, yet you let me be very ambitious about my thoughts. And that's something I super appreciate about you because you treated me like you knew I didn't know anything about business at first. And that's okay, because you knew I knew I could grow and learn. And I'm a quick learner and I'm a fast learner. And so that's why like you'll always hold a nice special spot yeah. in my life because <laughs> I really appreciate you let me grow and not really tearing me down. No, of course, and, um, and Tech Pitch, so it's funny, because when we talk about it now, it seems so, um, I mean, it's a great event that helped us launch bigger, better things, but the prize was only $5,000, and, and you got the Audience Choice Award, right? Yeah, so I won a free provisional patent process through SoCal IP which at the end of the day was worth actually way more than the $5,000 for the winner <laughs> because the winner got 5,000 bucks, but a patent can cost, you know, uh, 10, 20, $40,000. I'm $75,000 deep right now in patent. Wow. Wow. If you count up the fees plus everything else, yeah, we're like six years, 75,000. Well worth it though. That is yeah, well, we that's, are protected. Kind of, that's important because it's you created and innovated a product, you have to get a patent. Exactly. But at the end of the day, that's what you want at that event. You want a free patent application, uh, which yeah. got you going. Um, and then, okay, so then it's a bit of a roller coaster ride, right? Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. So tell us about, um, I think what's important and something that um, young entrepreneurs, especially, struggle with a lot with at the start finding the right team, finding the right people, mm -hmm. because originally it was just you. Um, so, you know, talk to us a little bit about building out the team and the, the, the peaks and valleys of that process. Yeah, I'd love to. So yeah, after October that happened, um, we had, I had like the fire lit underneath me. 
I had the drive. I had, I had validation. People were like, dang, not only is this kind of cool, but you're doing something good. And to me, I always thought that was the best selling product. You could have the coolest products in the world, but if it doesn't really do good for everybody else, it just doesn't have much merit in my, in my life. So I, I, I had this friend of mine and he always talked about his dad being one of like the wealthiest people he's ever met. He owns very large farms, dairy farms, feed mills, you name it. He, he basically has his hands in it. And I, I ended up talking to him and I said, hey, could you get a meeting with him? And so he's like, sure, he's your age. He just graduated Cornell with a business degree. And he was looking to drop his dad. His dad gave him a million dollars out of college and said, here you go, you know, go invest where you want to invest. Again, a totally different life than me. You know, there's, and you have to respect the people that have that because they worked hard for it. And so when he was looking to invest, he was looking to invest into a doggy daycare um, hotel. I remember that. <laughs> in Colorado. And I looked at Ryan and I'm like, Ryan, is that what you want to do? Like you just graduated from Cornell and you want to go live in Colorado with a bunch of dogs? Like that sounds like the life. <laughs> but come on, dude, like, look what I have. This is exciting. You know, you can come in and be my, you know, be, let's be partners. And so within a few hours of us sitting down and I had the piece, I had the little plate with the drawing on it. I had all my prototypes. I had crazy water calculations that I spent countless hours that meant really nothing because they're all just crazy calculations. But for some reason, I was so fixated on those gallons of water saved, not how much money can my business make? Because that's not what I was focused on. I was so focused on the product and not the business. And so he came in, shed well, light on that. That's amazing, Nate, though. Hang on, that's important, though. You were very mission driven. I mean, the business, um, you were so mission driven. Uh, and then, we, then you figured out the business elements. But uh, that's it took amazing. a long time. It but still this takes a long part time. Of this, right? Because that's what uh, that's what kept you go. That's what you know. That's what um, uh, when you wake up in the morning. That's what that was the motivation. Me. Yeah, yeah. And he came in and you know was just like, no, dude, you need Excel sheets. You need to know where your you know your COGs are. And I'm like, what? What is this? I need to save a bunch of water, man, and build a really cool product. So our synergies together, you know, we, we butted head on certain things, but then we complemented each other by being so different. And he valued me as a, somebody who could be the face of this company. And I valued him as somebody who can help grow this. And so we just um, decided to go 50, 50. And I've heard a lot of people, uh, they were trying to tell me, they're like, Oh, be 90, 90, 10, you know, it's just money. This is your idea. You can get money from anywhere. And I'm like, no, dude, I want a team. Like I need somebody who's going to spend every waking hour living this. And if you give somebody 10% of something, unless if you're, you know, you got multi-billion dollar companies, 10% is not going to really wake them up out of bed to go drive stronger. And yeah. so I thought I did the right thing, especially for my first company. And I'm all about teamwork, all about collaboration. I didn't want to be the CEO who sits up here while other people sit here. I want everybody to be right here everybody's voice is heard, everybody, you know, we all win, we all lose. And so that, that to me, that was very important. And so, yeah, Jan from October, I met with Ryan January, like 9th. And by the 16th, we had a legit partnership uh, written up by not, not a, the best lawyer I would ever say. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on her name. Is it, did you end up working with Donica? Uh, no, no. Um, Lisa Sommer Smith. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Local, yeah, yeah. So Local she is. She's yeah. The best, the best lawyer I will ever work with. Um, she's amazing, and yeah, he he ended up investing um, what well, like one hundred fifty thousand dollars, right off the bat, which was crazy. Yeah, yeah. So. So, so that was important, but you had to sell him on the idea, right? And oh, yeah. the fact that you could bring someone on board and convince him when you were so early stage, um, so that, early. that was validation. Um, I didn't even have, you know, I had a working prototype that I would use, thankfully, at my catering, catered events. Yeah. 
Yeah. And everybody said this was a cool idea, but it'll never work in a restaurant. That's what I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that these very high up executives for large like dishwashing companies. I, I met with them because that's what everybody told me to go do, even though I didn't really want to do that too much because I want to keep it away from them. Yeah. They just told me, oh, this idea will never work in a commercial kitchen. That's not how things are done. And I'm like, what do you mean? I so what, guys, is that what, what did you, so what did you then go talk to the restaurants and try? Well, and no, I just, I, I just kept on going because I was just like, wait a second, the cups are being washed exactly the same. If you go into any bar, they have three tiered brushes where you wash cups and then you rinse them and then you sanitize them. And then you literally drink out of them. Like in the back of the house, at least most of the dishware goes through a sanitation machine. But the people are already doing that. And I'm just like, wait a second. They just missed the back of the house. I don't know why. I don't know where. But for some reason, they didn't go back there to clean all their stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, this will work. It just it's going to take time. So what, do you remember the first restaurant you walked in to show them in a in a First restaurant I walked into. And their reaction and how, I mean, was it a, an a immediate good question. sell? Was it, or did you have to convince? I, I think from what yeah, I Yeah, Pluto's. Right, right. Yes. That's what it was. It was Pluto's. Yeah. Did you have to, um, if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the employees got it right away and it was a question of convincing the managers, yes, that's right? That's exactly right. And the thing too that we had was, remember when mine would like walk into a sink and it would take up the entire sink? Right, right, right. Okay, so the health department didn't like that very much because you need room to soak your largest pot and pan per the health department uh, rules and regulations. Your sink size depends on the largest pot inside of your kitchen oh, and you wow. have to be able to fully submerge it and so if I take up all that space with this giant locked in version they didn't like that very much and that's when we had to come up with a portable version and that's when the the bucket was introduced was so right the after portable version uh wasn't created for the catering businesses it was creating be created because of this regulatory constraint that restaurants yes. Exactly. Because if we did this to our market, as you know, there's only like, well, I don't, I can't say as you know, because you don't know the stats, but there's only like four to 6,000 caters that I can really sell to, which is a very small market versus California the one million. Or... No, no, no. In the U S. Oh, whoa. That's not yeah, a lot. It's not a lot versus like the 1 million opportunities that I have in, in the U S. Right. So if I would have done this, and taken just the caterers, my business was very small. And so that's, and that, oh, sorry, I was reading the other comment too. <laughs> and so um, that's why, that's why we had to make the decision of going like to a portable because plastic was cheaper than building a stainless version at that current time. Yeah. Because our the portable version for the restaurants, Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, um, you were adapting the model due to regulations. Um, so how, I mean, so the employees were bought in. When you show it to the employees, they're like, oh my God, this is awesome. This is going to save me so much time. Exactly. How do, you, do you get them to then leverage you to go talk to their managers to try to convince the manager? Or how, how, what's the process in, 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 um, in selling the product to the restaurant? Like, how do you go about that next step? So that's a good question because it goes both ways. The managers see it as an efficient time saver, obviously, and they buy it for the employees. And sometimes the employees don't want to change what they're doing. So if they don't like it, then they're going to be like, oh, it slows me down or, oh, it's not working. And then what is the manager going to do? That's their employee. They need to listen to them or else, you know. And so getting the employees on board and training is one of the most important things. So as you know, changing behavior is so hard and everybody's been washing dishes with those damn spray nozzles for like 60 years now. What that's so archaic, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me that we're just spraying drinkable water that's heated to 120 degrees, which requires a lot of energy to heat down the drain. It's crazy. Yeah. 
yeah. on a daily basis, especially when those spray nozzles are using, you know, three in the middle of the country, they're using about three gallons per minute. Oh, that's nuts. So uh, did you actually personally go in and train employees of certain restaurants? Oh man. Yeah. So I would fill up my truck. So the day that the first plate scrape, the day that the first plate scrape came off, you know, so we do the injection molding of these guys. Here's the brushes. These brushes are made just in LA. And then these buckets were made in Akron, Ohio. And the large company let me private label these buckets and sell it as my own bucket. Um, and so the day that that came off the press, I literally filled up my truck and I drove to Cambria, one of the worst water places, you know, the restrictions there, they were paying back in 2015. Um, for example, you have Indigo Moon. Oh yeah. He was paying over $2,700 a month in water bills because uh, they were getting charged um, these extra rates because they would go over their allowance and they would be charged a crazy fee, but they couldn't come under their allowance because of the dishwashing. And I came in and we saved, like the first month we saved them $480 and I was selling plate scrapes for $500 at the time because that's what somebody told me to sell them for. And I was like, sure, what do I know? <laughs> and I learned quickly, no one's buying a $500 bucket and brushes. That's a, that's a so, fact. So, but you actually sold that one to... Oh, Indigo Moon. I sold, I had almost every restaurant in Cambria using the very first plate scrapes. That's amazing. I, think I had like two or three places that just had no need for it. Yeah. So what, what's your price point now? So right now we sell them for $219. Okay. Um, we're trying to find that sweet spot. Um, we think like one between 169 to 189 is right where people won't even blink. Um, and we have a new stainless steel version. So this is the new stainless version. As you can see, it's completely different. It has a whole different face so it can help ergonomics. It has way different brushes, like more advanced brushes to get a lot more bold. And this one is going to start at 999. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's all so, steel. Okay, so you hit the Cambria market, and then yep. what, like what? So this is about a year in? No, so that was, okay, so when Ryan, when Ryan joined, we spent all that money trying to find and build, okay, a little bit about me. I won't ever sell a product that I don't have in, star, in stock. I like doing pre-orders for like stainless steel, for example, but when plate scrapes were in my warehouse, then I will sell them because I want that quick fire. I want to start the, you know, the excitement and then give you the product right away. Not be like, oh my gosh, I got to wait six months for my supply chain. So for me, as, a, as somebody who wanted to start this company, building the foundation and implementing like, or trying to build a foundation that can scale was so important to me. Mm -hmm. I needed to find secured vendors and it's not just any vendors but american made ones i don't so tell me about what, why is that important so you all your products are made in the u.s so what what was uh, what's your so what are you seeing in the, yeah, what are you seeing in the news today how many ships are on the port right now stuck because where do where does everybody buy all their crap china it's crazy everything comes from overseas and to me if i want to sell to my fellow friends and family and people I want to convince to buy my product, I was going to build the best product that I know has the best, you know, um, raw ingredients in it. For example, my plastics. Uh, it's so important that I use FDA approved because my product has to be then approved by the health department, NSF, and the UL. And I know I could probably do stuff like that in China, but that's just not where my heart lies. I support American jobs. I support American manufacturing. And when I build a brush, I build a brush to last 10 years. I'm not looking for, you know, like this brush weighs four and a half pounds. That's a solid piece of yeah. plastic. I'm as a manufacturer, it's important that I know my, I, I cause a lot of greenhouse gas emissions because that's, I, I make plastic. It's a fact. It's not going to go away anytime soon, but what I can do is I can ensure that we do less manufacturing runs because that, that'll help us 
you know, be a better company and be better sustainable. But I also know that my products are going to last that long. Yeah. Now that's a bad thing for business when you're trying to make money. I was going to say, because part of the business model originally was, I know you got a lot of investors who gave you the feedback of, okay, this is a subscription model, right? Like where people- Tell the bucket and buy, tell them to buy brushes every month. And I'm like, what? No, how would I, how would I gain the trust of somebody if I keep telling them to spend money on me? I just- so, is, you're really true to the mission and to also uh, building that trust with your clients. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I walk it, breathe it, live it. Yeah. And I think that everybody should be transparent in that, especially when it comes from, like, I'm not somebody who buys, you know, again, cheap stuff and then marks it up and then resells it. I build it from scratch. And then we mark it up appropriately to build the company. And then we pass those savings on to our customers because we're trying to gain the trust because I, I want my customers around for life. Like I said, you've seen the spray nozzle? That's been around 60 years. Who's to say my products can't be in the back of every kitchen for the next 30 years? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you meet Ryan, you've got a, yeah. coach, you know, you've got, you're building you build a- the whole company, <laughs> literally so in one year. You spent 150K, so uh, you burned through that how fast? <laughs> it took us, it took us like a legit, 18 months to, 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 to spend that money, like That's very quick. So you built, you had an 18 month runway mm -hmm. and then you needed a bit more funding. Ran out of money. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly where this is going. Uh, so uh, what happened next? How did you, uh, how did you jump over that next hurdle? Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, oh man. Yeah. So we spent all of our money and we get all these certification, we do all these testings, we set up manufacturing, you know, everything's looking good. Um, but the brand looks like crap, excuse my language. But um, yeah, again, Ryan is, is a, you know, he's got his business degree, so he knows numbers and he's really good at um, long-term planning everything. Me, I'm just the ideas kind of guy. So when it comes to the website, we were running, Ryan's girlfriend was running it for us. And so it, you know, she did a great job, but everything just looks not put together. And I see this, yeah, this Lamborghini dude drive in town. And I'm like, oh man, who's this hot shot? And somehow I ended up catch, get, catching him at, you know, High Street Deli. Uh -huh. um, started talking to him, asked him what he did, social media marketing, blah, 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 blah. He asked me what I did. And obviously, you know me, I love talking about it. And I told him and he was interested and said, Hey man, you want to come by my office? And I said, sure. So I go back and I'm looking at Ryan and we could have been like, Hey dad, can you come, can you give us some more money, please? Um, because that's, that's how it, that's just how it is. But we chose not to do that because we're like, wait a second. Why, you know, let's try to, let's figure this out. These are obstacles that we need to understand. And we can't just be like, Hey dad, we got to get some more money. Cause I used to do that growing up. I lived up cause I worked for my dad and I lived off being like, dad, come on. I just need some more money, man. And I was tired of it. I'm, you know, I was what, 26 years old asking daddy for money. Like get out of here. What are you doing? Had to grow up real quick. Um, so then I, I was just infatuated or with, with this guy because he, he just, he just, seemed cool i don't know what it is but you know cars and me the lamborghinis i'm just like oh man this guy must be he just must know it all end up striking a deal with him bring in another hundred and fifty thousand dollars so he invested that money in the business yeah so he would you know i i think we had 60 sales at that point and you know a bear a, a website barely running maybe come back soon under construction most of the time um, <laughs> and me running around with a stack of uh, paper invoices with all the customers showing oh look we have sales we have sales look at it <laughs> um, but yeah could somehow convinced him to put in another 150k so hang on I mean that's kind of important though I mean so I tell um so I, I have this uh uh, this young guy who just started a business, he's 30 years old. And, uh, and that's one of the things I told him is like, and tell me what you think about that. Cause it sounds like it served you well. It's like from now on, every person you meet, 
all day long. It's all about telling them about what you do, about the business, no about, because you just never know. You just never know, right? And that just put it out there, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. So, um, and to your point, you know, live it, breathe it every day, all day long. And that's kind of how you operate, Nate, right? I mean, 100%. Because people might think, oh my God, you just got so lucky. But yes and no, because this is probably the umpteenth guy you talk to about, Easily. hey. <laughs> Trying to literally get somebody who can bring in some worth. Again, because at the end of the day, and you knew this, like money really wasn't the issue. It wasn't a matter of us raising money. It was a matter of us gathering and putting a team together to show that we can build a business that's worth growing. And then that's when somebody will legitimately put in money when you've built a solid foundation. And I always bring up the foundation because I live by that. You won't be a company if you don't have a foundation. You can't have a skyscraper if you don't have a foundation. So that was like the most important thing to me. So this guy, uh, he puts another 120... 150. 150, 150K. And so that keeps you going for how long? So what that did was is not only brought in money, but he also brought um, my COO and right-hand man now, Steven Zoller. And Steven went to college with this guy and Steven's been a hustler for as long as I can remember. But so at the beginning, he was the kind of guy, excuse me, sorry, the coffee. He was the kind of guy who would, who would literally just put his head down and work. Um, whereas in the original investor, and unfortunately, since this is being recorded, we have a contract in place where I can't negatively say anything um, because we bought him out and per his instructions and lawyers I can't talk about the situation yes. but what I can't yeah what I can say is um Steven Steven came in and literally put his head down and started working he's like dude you need a new brand because he used to do um uh distribution of eco-friendly products so he used oh, to sell bamboo cool. dish yeah dishware to restaurants to stores he used to do so much graphics designs, all everything. He wore all these different hats. And when he came in, he literally just started working. He's like, nope, I can handle this. I can handle this. I can do this. I can do this. And so he brought so much value that Ryan ended up stepping back and um, took on uh, the big picture invest investor role. And then Steven came in and became the right-hand man. And we officially launched Plate Scrape at the um, National Restaurant Show in Chicago, May of 2018. Wow. Okay. That's when everything came together, all the marketing material. We literally were testing the website hours before the show and having it crash. It was insane, like crazy, crazy stuff happened. Um, our booth got lost in transition. It showed up 12 minutes before the show started. We were the last booth in the show. And if you've ever been to the McCormick Center in Chicago, it legit took us 18 minutes to get to our booth. There yeah. was that, it was that big. Those places are massive. So that, that you know, so this is really interesting that the, this, this last uh, uh, saga or piece of the saga that you shared because you found an investor, but it wasn't just the money. They actually brought a lot to the table, which things, you know, elements that were probably even more key uh, to your point that this was an ops person that was able to also take care of social media marketing. And uh, so, you know, we talk about that a lot with founders, the importance of finding investors that um, uh, the right investors. Exactly. Yeah. Like I said, money's, money wasn't an issue. We could have gotten money in multiple places. We needed help. Yeah. Help, help is so important when growing, especially, you know, when you're, when you are such a small team. Yeah. Help. You need help anywhere. That's why I love the SBDC because I get free help. <laughs> this is great. We're gonna we're gonna take that piece and just put it all over social media. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're building out your team. You've got this new right hand man. Uh, then you go to the show. So how was Plate Scrape received at the show? Within the first half hour, the show wasn't even open. We were, all, we were just standing by our booth, you know, like I said, waiting for our other half of the booth to show up so we can set it up. We had this amazing booth built. It's actually my test kitchen in my warehouse. Um, it's two sinks put together that are all lit up. We sold a pallet to an Israeli guy right out of Israel. He's like, I have this, this, and this. How much for a pallet? 
instant, we sold our first pallet right then and there. And then after that, so hang we on were, how many buckets are in a pallet? Okay, so for example, so depending on what, if you go sea or air, because both uh, pallets you have in a 48 by 40 or a 48 by 48. And so we just sold a normal 48 by 40, normal pallet by um, boat. And it was 48 plate scrapes to a pallet. Okay. And we were selling them for $2.99 a piece. But for a show special, I think we did $2.25. Okay. I had, ha you know, it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, also, there happened to be a bunch of celebrity chefs there. So I got a plate scrape signed by a bunch of celebrity chefs. They all told me, hey, this is a great idea. Keep going. I made some amazing connections with some plate manufacturers. Um, and then I think we ended up selling, I don't know, 200 or more at, on the show floor. Um, but if you, this, so this show in particular, they, it's frowned upon to buy stuff on the floor. I don't know why they do that. It's really annoying. But yeah, we ended up selling like 200 through our website. Hence why we needed the website to work because wow. we knew, yeah, we, knew yeah, we were going to sell. Mean, you had what? It was, that's what, 400K, 500K in sales? Or how much, hang on, 200 times, uh, two no. no, how many did you sell? No, I only sold like 200. Oh, anyway. sorry, I thought 2,000. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so oh my God, if I sold 2,000, <laughs> so unfortunately we're not hotcakes and we don't sell like that. Yeah, but no, so you made 50K in sales. Yeah, um, it, was, it was awesome. Um, we ended well. It was a little. It was a little less than that because we ended up doing some more show deals because people bought a few packs. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you just kind of hustle and bustle with people. Right, you trade just trying to get it out there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so from from then on, so 2018, it was actually more like 36,000 because that's what we recorded for the year in sales. Um, we from May to December, we ended up making crazy connections, crazy. We, we met with everybody to talk to anybody that would listen to us. And then in 2019, we went from, like I said, 36,000 to 230 or 240,000 in sales. Wow. Just exploded. Word of mouth was really happening. And the large distributor Ecolab picked us up and Ecolab today has probably sold, I don't know, $300,000 worth of plate scrapes for me. Wow. Yeah. And they've gotten some huge customers for us um, that I don't get to talk to unless their product breaks. Um, and then that's how I figured out like the, the University of Nebraska, they can't say enough. Like they let me use their quote because they're so excited about the plate scrapes, even though they have a $60,000 dish machine. They were told... Wow. Yeah, they were told, just throw all the dirty dishes in there. It'll clean itself. And every single time they have to rerun them, which takes up more water and more chemicals. And guess who's winning? Yeah. The chemical, you know, the big guys. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's so the, the, that conference, that one conference kind of put you on the map in the sense. Oh, center. huge. Yeah, yeah. Huge. We, were able to, we were able to kind of use that um, because we also, we, we were also mentioned in an article from that. Um, like one of the most exciting new products to hit the floor because we, yeah, we stirred up, yeah, we stirred up a lot of attention. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, I met some celebrity chefs that became ambassadors. We did some some little news conference things and some some marketing spurts. And then 2019, we were crushing life. Like I was going to London to set up manufacturing facilities. I went down to Costa Rica to do the exact same thing, and we have deals in South Africa now. Um, we were jet setting as well as building the warehouse and the team and everything like that. And then 2020, um, January, February, March, the first two weeks, I think, I think those first three months, we, we already did like $90,000 in sales. Like we had two or four uh, trade shows crushing life. Yeah. Oh my God. It was amazing. And then okay. boom. COVID. I was at two trade shows, shaking people's hands, touching my face. And I'm in the van on the way back, shivering and coughing. And Steven's like, dude, are you okay? While in the background, you're hearing, if you have these symptoms, be, you know, be careful, coughing, shaking, fever. And I'm in the truck, just like dying for sure. Caught COVID right away. 
um, brought it back to home and my girlfriend got sick instantly. Oh God. We, oh, we, we were sick for days. It was so bad. Um, and then tried to, and then we weathered out the storm, you know? The so how, so tell me about your COVID experience. So uh, that must've been hard. Every restaurant shut down. And yeah. where do we sell our products? Restaurants. So we immediately went to the SBA for help. Um, we got help. Unfortunately, I'm an LLC, LLC so I'm not a, an employee. So I don't get any workman's comp. I don't get any um, whatever, any financial help. No PPP, none of that. We had to wait until they created the new thing called the EIDL loan. Um, we applied for that, got $74,000. Um, unfortunately, during this time, we were having some major issues with that business partner to the point where he had to use his lawyer just to talk to us, which okay. means we were paying Linda, you know, $410 an hour just to talk to our own business partner. Yeah. And we're like, dude, you are crushing us during COVID too. But Linda, God, she's the best lawyer, bought him out during <laughs> COVID. We used the EIDL money to buy him out. Um, we ended up buying him out for $50,000. Um, Cause again, the business, everything was tanking. We had no real future. Everybody was kind of scrambling and really second guessing what, you know, reality was. We we're all taking a lot of things for granted. So during COVID, uh, you restructured the business. So took care of that, which is probably the silver lining, uh, right? 100%. I yeah. couldn't, have, couldn't be happier. Um, and yeah. then but you, so you still, but you still believed in the business? Like you, you, you mm. COVID just, you said, okay, so ready for this? this and you, you, what was, what was going two, to your head? Two or three months go by and our sales, like I said, we were doing, you know, 25, 30,000 in sales a month consecutively, like January, February, March, and then zero. Hello? Hey. Yep. Uh, no, but I'll grab those packages that are sitting out front. Thank you so much. Packages out front that have been sent outside since yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, so two, two, we legitimately had like nine, 60 or 90 days of zero sales, zero, nothing. And then one day this order comes in, it was in the middle of the country. And I'll never forget, we called them. We're like, Two, how are you? You guys are opened. What's going on? You guys have, you guys are selling, you know, you know, cleaning plates. And they go, the health department just told us if we want to wash dishes, we need to be in full PPE. We need to have protective glass around our dishwasher because the spray nozzle is splashing potential germs back to the staff that can infect them. And we go, holy shit. Sorry. Here's here it is. Plate scrape is now the safer alternative because they showed the plate scrape to the health department and they go, oh, use that. Of course, everything is contained underwater. Why would that not be the safer alternative? Wow. So we pivoted instantly. And instead of the water savings, we were now deemed the safer alternative if you want to continue working without having to spend money on all that PPE gear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then during that, I met a gentleman who sold a degreaser and a sanitizer, like right in March, um, the last trade show I went to, I met a gentleman who owns a business, uh, a manufacturing company who manufactures degreasers and sanitizers. Mm. And they saw value in us because our product needs soap inside of it to clean the products. And we, we struck up a, a conversation and we just ended up having an amazing amount of synergies that we wanted to partner with each other. They would give us their product at a very low price and we could resell it. Um, so right then and there, we thought, wow, not only are plates great safer, but now we have a reoccurring monthly revenue generator to keep this business going. Because as you... you you, you have that subscription model thing finally. So it's not the brushes, it's the- Finally, same. it yeah. came in and we weren't even seeking it. Obviously I was trying to get Ecolab to give me their own soap brand, but you try working with a company that does 14 billion a year. Yeah. They don't give you the time of day, even though they buy all my products. I don't get to talk to no one there. It's so no. weird. And 
They're 72 days late on their payment right now, $17,000 PO. <laughs> and you, we have 2% net 10 and they're 72 days late. And guess how many emails they replied to? None. Yeah, it's yeah. like not even worth working with them almost. But then you get a you know seventeen thousand dollar check, and you're like, all right, okay, one more time. <laughs> but if you do this one more time, <laughs> oh, so yeah. um, so you change the messaging about fleet scrape. Uh, oh my gosh, yes, yeah, safer. So it's deemed safer. And then now again, the monthly everybody asked because we were trying. So we bought the business partner out which means our money is now gone again. Yeah. We just got money in. We just got rid of it literally day and night. So 2020, we, 2020, we buy out the partner. We finalize the partnership with um, Simix, which is the degreaser manufacturer. And then my conversations with Waffle House continue to take huge fire like a lot of a lot of um potential because not only am i building them a custom stainless steel plate scrape called the waffle scrape but now i have a degreaser the waffle scrape. yeah the, the waffle, waffle scrape, scrape. <laughs> waffle scrape. so waffle house if you don't know anything about them they put their name on everything so okay. anything like heinz makes their own ketchup for waffle house everything is all waffle house labeled so if you want to make them happy you put their name on it and they'll love it and I learned that quick, so I made a waffle scrape. What do I care? It's <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, and so I brought them the bonsai. Uh, well, it, back in the day, it was called scrape soap. Probably the best name you could ever come up with. <laughs> um, you know, is it called waffle soap? No, no. So scrape soap, the, the problem with that is people were like, where do I use it? Just my plate scrape? And that wasn't the point because it could be used anywhere all over it can be used on any surface any fabric it's safe non-toxic hypoallergenic um awesome stuff so i was just like man we got to come up with a better name and for some reason bonsai i'm a huge bonsai tree guy i have bonsai trees everywhere i just love them that name i just just said it out one day and i was like bonsai a clean peace of mind whoa that kind of sounds cool <laughs> and now yeah now we have bonsai with our nice little bonsai tree um that's oh. our we're trying to make that the iconic logo and it's now bonsai um clean sanitize protect and so what is you know um and this what it does for the plate scrape so you can use this um the the reason why we don't recommend using dawn is dawn is made from animal fat ah and this is acts like a natural um draino so this will emulsify any type of grease as well as remove odors. And as, as you know, um, odors only come from bacteria. Yeah. That's why things smell. And this removes all bacteria, and especially COVID at a 99.9% .9 effective rate. Yeah. So this soap is, is what you came up with, with the degreaser partner? Yes, exactly. So I came up with the brand Bonsai. Oh, his, sure. sure. His, yeah, yeah. yeah. His product in there, though. Yeah, his product is in here, yes. And yeah. so I call it, you know, Bonsai powered by Simix. But yeah, this can go in the mop bucket. It goes in your, it's, it's made for cleaning floors because it creates a non-slip uh, uh, surface, which is okay. huge for liability purposes. Right. That's another reason why Waffle House loves it. And then you also put it in spray bottles. We, we made a spray bottle size. And so this is safe for organic kitchens. It has EPA Green Dot certified ingredients. And um, it's effect, an effective sanitizer that kills COVID. That's awesome. I love that um, uh, through and out, you know, you, you're, you're still staying true to um, uh, all these missions that you have, you know, uh, saving water, uh, sustainable products, uh, non-toxic products. It's pretty cool. Um, so, okay, Nate, we, we only have a few minutes left, but um, through all this, You've gone through so much. Um, you know what? Some takeaways for someone who someone walks into my office today and tells me, "Hey, I have this great idea." <laughs> what are the couple tips that you want to give? What are, what are the the two three things that you've learned over the last five? Well, six 
there's a huge thing that I like to look at is, you know, are you looking to make a lot of money or are you looking to build a brand? Because you can go about it any different way you want. You know, some people are money focused. Some people are mission driven focused. So when you look at what you want to do, that is the most important thing because that'll, that'll determine how much energy you're going to put into something. And like, you know, me, I think about my company 24 hours a day. Like even in my sleep, I'm 100% thinking about what I need to do to move each project forward. And something that I would literally say is quit using the word failure and start using the word opportunity. It's an opportunity to change a bad situation to a good one. It's not, it's nothing's a failure. Like what? That, if you start using that word, then you kind of associate yourself with that failure. And so that is completely out of my vocabulary. I won't use that. It's, it's all about opportunities and it's all about um, just being true to yourself, shootiness. You just gotta, <laughs> you just gotta be who you are. And some people are going to want to try to change you, but if you're good at learning and adapting mm -hmm. and reading the room, that'll get you pretty far. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, anybody who you talk to can have any, could know anybody who could take you to the next level like there's so much I'm missing that I didn't you know share like the shark tank experience yeah and, you know what I'm saying like there's yeah there's so many more different things that I could go on about but that would need a whole nother coffee and conversation <laughs> all of our failures yeah yeah no that's a great I mean I love that it's it's uh because basically when you're in a business it's all about troubleshooting right things are going to come up every single day every day how are you going to handle that? Like it, it's how are you going to create an opportunity out of that? Right. And that's the best part. And, and, and honestly, take it from me, get yourself a team. Yeah. Like, and, and not just a team, but give them creative space for them to be their own individual because you'll learn a lot. And if you don't need them, you can trim the excess fat. That's okay. That's just okay. business. And they say it all the time, but if you treat others that you want to be treated, it goes a long way. You know, I've had to learn a lot from being the boss. I've never been put in the boss situation, but I have a team underneath me. And it's, it's sometimes it's hard for me to differentiate, you know, friendship speaking versus professional speaking. Mm -hmm. Because what? sometimes, <laughs> people, <laughs> yeah, sometimes people, sometimes people don't get sarcasm, or, you know, maybe I don't get that I need to be more appropriate about when my sarcasm is used. And I've learned to step into that role pretty heavy over the last year since we've been, since we've taken this company to a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, listen, it's, Nate, it's been so great uh, catching up with you. Uh, you're such a phenomenal uh, example for the community, for the business community, for all these young new entrepreneurs. Um, and, you know, thanks for making the time to speak with us today. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, and so, by the way, this has been recorded. So you're welcome to use the recordings, you know, share it with friends. And here are some, uh, updated, some updates regarding upcoming events. And I have a, a little pop-up that's blocking my view here. But we do Ooh. have QuickBooks coming up. So if you want some help with QuickBooks, Damon is awesome. He's going to facilitate that. He's QuickBooks certified. He'll uh, facilitate the workshop October 15th. Sign up. Um, October 20th, we have a, uh, another workshop on, uh, about Google, uh, how to grow with Google, Google AdWords, et cetera. Learn about um, how all that stuff works, October 20th. And then our next Coffee and Conversation, uh, November 10th, uh, we do one every month is with Christy Garcia, um, founder and CEO of Mindful Choice. Uh, she is the most effective, uh, life-changing, literally, and I, I don't say that lightly, um, uh, sort of, I mean, a leadership coach, if you will, uh, but she uses tools and has an approach that is truly life-changing in how are you going to build relationships with your team, uh, but also it extends out into relationships with every person in your life, your friends, your family. Uh, it's just, she has an in incredible approach. Um, it's been one of the most, um, uh, yeah, one of the most important experiences I've had this year is working with Christy and my team uh, as well as the, uh, some founders of our incubator startups. We all went through her program this year 
and we were all pretty affected by it in the most positive way. So uh, don't miss Christy November 10th. Uh, and that's it. That's all we have. That's what we have going for the next uh, month or so. Judy, Nate, I got one thing. Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And what we're doing. So if you go to um, either platescrape.store or waterwarrior.store, that's our storefront where we sell all of our different products. Um, some of them I didn't even tell you about because there's, like I said, more. We have so many things going on. But we've <laughs> installed a coupon code. Um, for anybody who's interested, you can yeah. get 15% off the entire site. Uh, just type in the code SBDC. Oh, awesome. And yeah. So like I said, we sell home sanitizers, home bottles um, for the home market. We're all glass, no plastic. So that's the sustainable approach we're trying to go towards with the home market. So yeah, if you guys are all interested in anything on the, um, the yeah, exactly. Van life. We have a lot of uh, connection or Yes, we, we're literally working right now with Mercedes for this van life project. Um, oh, but yeah, awesome. check out the store and buy some stuff and save some money. Awesome. Thank you, Nate. Thanks for the generous coupon for all of our uh, members here and all the, uh, the people involved with the SBDC. Um, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Tim, for, the, for everything, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye.